welcome to part two you can see I've got my gloves on for safety and I've got my safety glasses on uh, this is part two of me building a custom hilt uh, for a lovely guy called Jim who has his own YouTube channel um, you should definitely check it out Fulcrum and the Force uh, he does loads of lightsaber reviews uh, not just on me uh, the eight lightsaber reviews on uh, all sorts of different companies Padawan Outpost uh, DC Sabres, he did a brilliant one on DC Sabres gorgeous hills from DC, DC Sabres um, so he does all these great things he does lots of video uh, video reviews on Lego builds uh, Lego Star Wars uh, he's just an all round general great guy really entertaining channel, really really fun guy to watch uh, has a real passion for Star Wars um, so yeah, go and check him out he's Fulcrum and the Force, I'll put a link in below um, he has done a, a lot of video reviews for us. Um, just a, a quick uh, mention on that. Um, yes, I have sent him a lot of uh, lightsabers for him to review. The reason is because, one, I love the way he does his content. I think he's very uh, interesting to watch and great fun to watch on his uh, reviews. Um, I do not encourage him in any way to be positive. Every single time I've sent a lightsaber over to him, I have always said it is your channel. You can say and do whatever you want to say. I have no control over it in any way. If he doesn't like something, he will tell you if he doesn't like it. Uh, if he likes something, he'll tell you that as well. Uh, at the end of the day, the way I see it is everyone has their own opinion. I might like something that you might not particularly like. You might like something that I don't really fancy. Uh, I did a Raptor which was um, recently which was completely rusted. Jim didn't like that version. I, I quite did. I quite liked it a lot, but he didn't. So we all have our own preferences, we all have our own tastes, no one's wrong, no one's right, we all meet in the middle. So yeah, I mean like I said, anyone does a review, uh, you know, I, I, all I ask in uh, anyone that ever does a review on any of my products, um, if there's something you're not happy about, don't just sit there and slag it off, be constructive about it, tell me why you don't like it, tell me how you think it could be improved, give me that kind of feedback and then I can take that and I can actually go ahead with it. Uh, something to mention about the website, it has changed recently, it looking, it's looking a lot better, uh, but also if you go to the RGB X range or the Neo Pixel range at the very top of both of those pages, uh, there is now a sound profile sample. So you can go on and you can actually hear every single one of the profiles that, uh, that come with that particular uh, soundboard, so the Dark Wolf for the RGB X or the Xenopixel for the near pixel range. So you get to hear all those sound fonts. That was actually a suggestion by a customer. Thank you very much to that customer who suggested that. Very, very good idea. Uh, it took some time to do, but it's up there. I hope you like it. I hope it helps other people in the future as well. So, back to part two. So what, where were we? We were making this custom hilt for, uh, for Jim from Falcon and Force, and we had cut these three pieces. This is the emitter, this is the main handle and this is the core that holds everything together we basically get the emitter and we put the core on there and that's basically all he wants that's how he wants it to look which is fine i am going to weather it and age it a little bit i'm not doing any battle damage he doesn't want any battle damage uh, he just wants you to look basically along these lines because it's a shoto version of a bigger hilt that he has um, I will. I am going to cut out a small section to go in here, which will house the uh, the blade and the uh, tech for the blade. Um, this is a, th a thirty-two mil. So this is a thirty-two mil outer diameter tube with a one point six mil wall, which means that it's got an inner diameter. And these are approximate. They're not exact. They they do vary. It's got an inner cut diameter of twenty eight point um, twenty eight point six ish. Uh, so that's far too big for any blade to go in so we actually reduce that down uh, with another piece of tube that goes in the side so I'm going to do that now once that's done we then get to put all this together um, and uh, yeah we get to drill the holes for the uh, the locking nut as well um, that's as far as we'll be going in part two uh, actually no I have a pommel to do as well so I will do the pommel uh, and you get to see that so uh, yeah, let's let's crack on, shall we? I'm going to go over to the meter saw. 
Uh, as always, I've already said I've got glasses on for safety. I've got gloves on as well. Um, you must, uh, well, I strongly recommend when working with machines like meter saws or anything like that, that you always wear ear protection, which I have here. So just get that on. Uh, I have a piece, this is a piece from, um, that was cut off a while ago. Uh, it's basically the exact size I want it to be. So I'm going to actually cut this down to just take the very edge off it. And then I can use this. So I'm just going to do that there. Again, as I said in my previous video, I never put my fingers anywhere near this. It's far too dangerous. So... <laughs> If you did hear that, as I, if you did hear that because of this, I uh, said so that's the part that I want. Uh, and again, I always leave this to run out. I don't do anything. It always runs out and stops on its own of, own accord, primarily because uh, it could cause an accident or an injury uh, if something gets caught in the blade. And I'll tell you what, that thing is damn fast. So there's no way I'm messing with that thing. Uh, I'm just going to give this a quick sand just to make sure it's all smooth and there's no problems okay so that's that bit done very loud ear defenders like i said right so i am now going to um I'm now going to deburr these pieces because they are quite sharp. So just get my deburring tool. Just deburr that end. Okay, and I'll do the same on here. And also on the base. So that's that. And again, we will deburr this. The reason for deburring is I don't want any sharp parts anywhere. Um, everything is sanded down. Everything is made to be uh, as smooth and as safe as possible for anybody using any of these. So this will go in here, like so. This will go in here. Whoop! Come back out. So it'll look like that. Obviously, that just slides out. These these are not exact fits. There are slight, ever so slight differences. Uh, so when there is a slight difference, I use this material, this tape, and I'll just put a small amount around here, and then that uh, accounts for the difference in tolerance between the two sizes. So now, no, it needs a bit more. I think it's three wraps this needs. Okay. Oops, a bit off. There we go. So now this will hopefully fit on. Uh, again, it's just it's a lot of fiddly bits to uh, to do this. It's just one of those things. It's how it. Always has been. Oops. Is that okay? Yes, right. So I'll just adjust this one to be the same. Okay, and hopefully that should be. There we go. Just want these to line up, so. Right, that looks okay. I'll just put a tiny bit around here as well. I think it might be a case that this will be riveted in place. Whoopsie, a bit too far. Is 
Does that look all wrong? I also need to put a point. I'm just going to drill a tiny hole here and put a rivet in place. The reason for me doing a tiny little hole is because I can put a rivet here and I'll stop anything falling out. I'll bring it back here. Okay, so I need a rivet in here. Oops. <clears throat> so you might think that's a bit odd me putting a rivet in here, but the reason is now when I put the blade in, the blade will stop at that one point. I just need to sand that bit down. When I say sand, I mean file. So just put this to the side. Oh, you can't see me doing that, can you? Right, okay, now you can see me doing it. Okay, right, so that's all nicely lined up, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to put a hole in here. Um, I don't want to do it so it's in line. Okay, so this is the back so we need to put the locking nut there and I'll put a small rivet there uh, where's my hammer actually I'll see if I can use this hole punch I don't think it'll work but So annoying that hole punch. Brand new and it doesn't work. Okay, back over to the the drill. top hole is going to be for the locking nut. This is going to be for the rivet. Now I want the rivet to be flush so it doesn't really stand out. Most of my rivets will stand out. I don't want this one to do that. So I'm going to reduce the height on here for now. And I'm going to remove this drill bit and I'm going to fix this one in place. There we go, bring this back up. Okay. Right, now... I can 
get my rivet, put it in place, use my tool to lock that. So now because of that it holds this in place, it holds the inner tube in place, all in the same area. Uh, I'm just going to get another rivet just there to get rid of a little piece inside. And I want my curved file just to quickly go around on the inside. There we are. So now that's nice and smooth in there. So there's nothing to block it apart from the rivet that we placed in there earlier to stop and hold everything in place. Um, so the next thing to do before I forget, which uh, is very important, is I need to actually tap this part here. Okay, so I'll just come to here. I've got my tap. Now I always do this by hand and I know a lot of you out there are all going why are you using oil you need to put oil on on the tap um, this works fine without oil uh, I've done it with oil I've done it without oil and there's no difference whatsoever between the results of either way because uh, it's just it's only there's only about four millimeters of material that I'm going through so it's a very small amount of material um, there are some hilts that have a lot more material to go through and when I do those ones I will use oil on those uh, but I always do this part by hand uh, a number of years ago I did have a tool which was on a drill and I just did it that way and it took seconds but it wasn't as reliable so I, uh, I decided and I opted to do the, this process by hand each and every time and I think that was the right decision. So that's nearly done. Come on, out, there we go, right. So now that is tapped. And as you can see, it's perfectly at the back as well. Okay. Um, oh, what's the next thing to do? I think the next thing to do is to actually uh, fit on the uh, the bottom section. So this section, and then after that we have after that we have then got the pole. So sorry guys, like I said, I've never done anything like this before, I've never recorded myself. Oh, sorry, needed this which fell on the floor. Uh, I'm just taking off this bit of tape that was on here from earlier, because we don't want to see that. There we go, and there's a bit of tape on top here as well, which I will also take off there we go right so that's that part done we need to put this in place I think for this we want to lock this in place that's a, a must and it would be nice to have a belt clip on here as well. So, putting the pen top down when I needed the pen top itself. Right, okay, so, so, I'm gonna put a little mark there. We're gonna go over to the metal mill, which is something I didn't think we would be using today. So follow me, dear viewer, while we go to the metal mill, because we are going to mill out a section. Uh, I need to tilt you 
down. Um, I'll do it from, I'll let you see it from this side, it might be a bit easier. Okay. So, welcome to the metal mill. Actually a really, really expensive piece of kit. Uh, way more than you'd expect it to be. Uh, I had one very good year a while ago, about two, three years ago, and I used, managed to use the money to actually upgrade by the uh, mill. So clamp that in place. Okay, recording. Yep. No, that's a bit better. And here we go. I'm just going to grab a D ring. Yeah, there's the one. Right, so the reason why I just paused for a moment is I wanted to grab one of these. I'm going to do it so that the rivet, the hole for this is here. Let's just bring this back a moment. So I want, I'm going to put a locking nut here which will hold the pommel in place, okay? But I need to know where it needs to go to, so it's going to there. Beautiful. Now we just drop this down a bit more. It's done, it's done, I hate to spend some time. I'll tell you what, the this machine and the mill makes so much mess, those two things together. Like the messiest things in the building. So now that fits in there like this. So it's got a nice low profile and you can actually get to the locking nut as well. So we now need to go back to where we were a moment ago with the emitter and put these together. Okay. And now you can see everything. Excellent. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape around this actually. Uh, just, to, just to really hold it in place. 
But first, I think I'm going to give that a quick sand. No, not that piece, this piece. Because it's a bit too shiny. This isn't a shiny handle. So because it's not a shiny handle, we want it all to look kind of blending. Obviously I'm using pre-polished um, tubing. Well, I'm using tubing that was polished, however you want to word it. Um, which isn't ideal when you want it to look old. But when I put the paint weathering on here, it will balance it all out and it'll be fine then. So it's not a huge problem. God, that is such a tight fit. Uh, right. Okay. Right, we just need to make sure the back is aligned. Is that in alignment? Yes, there we go. Right, now... I just want to round this corner for a bit more. Okay, now we can get put this part in place yeah that looks nice that uh, goes well okay let's uh, drill and lock this in place shall we <clears throat> okay I am um, a big fan yeah that is level Sorry, so when you look at it from different angles, you go, is that really level? Is that really right? And it is. It's just me being dark. Just pop that there. Now we've got the hole going. And give that a quick blow. Get rid of any other bits. Get the rivets that we love so much. Um, I'm just gonna... There we go. Beautiful. That's... And that's now. Wow! That's now all locked in place. So none of this is going to move now. Uh, so that's basically the the concept that I wanted. That's how we wanted it to look. Um, I will drill a hole in here as well. Um, Oh, actually, I'll drill that hole now while we are here. I'm actually going to use my tool to make sure I get a good centre. There we are. Beautiful. Okay, so what we'll be doing next is uh, we're using some slightly smaller tube that will fit inside here it'll go inside the pommel and then we will have um, the ability to make the pommel that I want okay Whoa. so I think that's gone pretty well um, we're about 30 minutes already 30 minutes god that <sighs> I can't believe how long it's taken just to do these few things. It's a it's a very nice show. I'm going to put it back here so we can all have a good look at how nice it is. Look at this little tiny show now. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of room in there for the blade and for the uh, electronics to go in. Uh, I think he's going to be very happy with this. Uh, it's got the detailing that he wanted. I'm looking forward to seeing it weathered. 
Uh, but yeah, so that was the end, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of part two. So, part three. The pommel's most probably going to take me just as long as part one and part two. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, so, uh, tune back in later on uh, for part three where I make the pommel for this. Um, I've got a couple of ideas of which material I want to use. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty good. And then that's it. That's his uh, custom Shoto one of a kind hilts made. Um, just so you're aware, this hilt will not be for sale. Uh, this is a one off commission just for Jim. Uh, it is one of his own personal favourites. Uh, and because of that, um, it will not be something that will be available to the public to buy, um, regardless of how much you may want one. Um, Unless he decides that he is happy for people to um, actually purchase this lovely little Shoto. Um, just so you're aware, if you are wanting a custom build, I do look at doing custom builds. There's a £20 fee at the very start for custom builds. Uh, the reason for the £20 fee is specifically uh, it's for research. If you provide, provide me a design, I need to make sure that there is no design like that anywhere else in the world so I can't get to, so I won't be stepping on other Saber Smith's toes uh, so that's why there's a £20 fee uh, but that £20 fee is then taken off the total charge for that custom build um, at the end so it's not something that you pay and it, that's it it's something that does come off the total if however you have provided a, uh, a, a design that you're wanting me to make that has been uh, created before um, then unfortunately that £20 won't be reimbursable but I will work with you to see if there's another way for us to uh, create something possibly similar but not exactly the same if that makes sense so I hope you liked part two uh, I'm just going to give this a quick uh, sand down the side Just to make things a bit easier. There we go. So it's all nice and sanded inside now. Really nice, nice hill. But anyway, I hope you like part two. I will see you in part three. Oh yeah. Da, 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 da. It's a show.